Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're gonna be creating this transparent iPhone 4S. The iPhone has a unique LCD assembly with no coloring on the top and bottom, and as a result reveals the internals behind the LCD, which would normally be hidden. I had purchased this custom transparent display assembly many months ago now, but haven't got around to install it. The display is very hard to find online, and this particular one is from eBay US, and it's meant to fit a US only CDMA iPhone 4, so I will have to make it fit to the iPhone 4S. So now that I had this custom LCD, it was time to grab some housings to attach it to. Now I'm gonna use two for this, one to test the fit of the CDMA iPhone 4 screen, and one which I'll actually use to install the screen later on once everything is ready to go. At first, using the test dummy housing, you can see putting the display on, it fits really good, although near the SIM tray, there's a peg in the road, um, which stops the SIM tray going in or out. So that has to be removed. Now that is the only difference between the iPhone 4 CDMA and the iPhone 4S displays. With the peg cut with some side cutters, it was still interfering with the SIM tray. So I had to file it down a little bit further to allow that SIM tray to freely go in and out. Once that was done, the display would fit correctly and everything was good to go. So then I grabbed the second housing, which I grabbed from my parts bin. It has a cracked LCD on it, so I'll need to remove that first so I can install my custom one onto the housing. The housing isn't in the world's greatest condition. It has some marks and scratches, but it is one of the only housings for the 4S I have laying around that I can use for this project. This housing came off of my 64 gigabyte iPhone 4S, which I transferred into a different housing and put a custom purple screen and back onto. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check that out. Now it's time to remove the display and because it's cracked, glass may shatter uh, even further and go everywhere. So just keep that in mind if you're ever doing a 4S or 4 display um, because there is glue up the top and bottom. Once the display is removed, I can clean off the residue left and the rest of the glass. It was still sticking behind and give the surroundings of the display a bit of a clean by scraping off any dirt that may be on there. Next, I can remove the adhesive from the top. The stuff down the bottom is in absolutely perfect condition, so I'm just going to leave that on there um, as it doesn't have any fingerprints or anything in it. Then I can install the grill for the earpiece and prep the new display for installation. I can feed the cables through, making sure not to snag them as it's very easy to do with the digitizer cable as it has a little bit of a tab coming out the side of it, so just be careful and very gentle when putting that through the mid-frame. With that done, I can line the display up and make sure to screw in all the screws on the sides to tighten in the display. Now that those screws have been tightened up, I can reinstall the four remaining screws, one in each of the corners, to fully secure the display back into place. I also did notice that the water indicator on the dock was red, which means that it's come in contact with some kind of water or moisture, but the dock connector works perfectly fine, so I won't be replacing that. Now I can just reinstall the speaker and we're good to go for now. I'm going to be using this phone as a donor phone for the logic board and battery. This phone is currently running iOS 8.1.1 and has SHSH blobs for various versions of iOS 5, 6, and obviously the iOS 8 blobs and iOS 9. I haven't currently downgraded the device back to iOS 5, although I am looking to do that very soon. It's a 16 gigabyte black model, and when I first purchased it, I brought it for parts only, and it turned out to be in lost mode. I contacted the number in the lost mode and they said that they no longer wanted the phone and actually unlocked it for me, so it's been unlocked ever since. I got this phone fairly cheap as I was going to use it for parts for another phone. It turns out that the display that was on it was dead and didn't work, so it didn't turn out to be as good a deal as I had hoped. But after getting it unlocked, it was an excellent deal considering it has older SHSH blobs. I've also saved SHSH blobs for iOS 6, now that Apple's signing it again. So now that the logic board has been unscrewed, we can remove it from this iPhone 4S housing and display, and get it ready to install in the new one. Lastly, I had to transfer across this little gold clip, which I believe is a grounding point for the camera on the iPhone 4S. I could line the logic board back into place and start connecting all the cables and connectors. It also helps to reinstall the SIM tray, one in my case to make sure that the clip had enough clearance that I could actually put the SIM tray in, considering the screen wasn't for this generation of iPhone, but also so it stops the logic board from falling out of the foam and it holds it in the correct position, which makes it a lot easier to start screwing things back together. 
Sometimes it's always good to test the phone before you screw everything back in, especially the logic board, because on the newer generations there's a lot more screws involved, so if something isn't working, like a power button, then you have to disassemble the whole phone again. So most times you can just sit it back together and it will work just fine for testing. And then I like to screw everything down again. But in this case, I thought that I had a pretty good shot at making sure everything was working the first time. And testing it out, yes, indeed it is working. The display isn't damaged from me filing away at it. Um, and I didn't damage the LCD in any manner at all. After I've tested all the functions of the phone, that's the display, all the buttons are functioning and everything, um, and nothing was damaged throughout the repair, I could reinstall the last of the brackets over the connectors on the iPhone 4S, and then I could reinstall the battery. I didn't actually install a new battery in this because I don't have one at the moment, although I will do that in the near future. It's pretty easy to install, so I won't need to really show that on video, as it's no different to reinstalling the old one. Next, I can remove the film on top of the display, revealing the brand new glass underneath. I can install a tempered glass screen protector from preventing the screen from ever getting scratches. Now that I've made the front transparent, I wanted to make a transparent back. Now they're very hard to come by on the internet, already pre-made ones that look similar to the front, so I thought I'd have a go at making my own. Now I had this back glass that actually had a little bit of separation, and that was just due to poor postage and shipping. Either way, the glass wasn't cracked, so I thought I'd have a go at this. Unlike the Samsung Galaxy, the colouring doesn't just peel away. You actually have to scrape at it with a metal pry tool. Not only does this take a really long time, it also is inaccurate, you can't sort of get all the material off. You can also scratch away the Apple logo and iPhone text very easily if you're not careful. And it obviously is going to leave marks and scratches in the glass itself. So if you're doing this, just try and find and source out a transparent one on the internet. But for today, I thought I'd do this just to show you what it would look like if you had a pre-made one um, that maybe looked a little bit better than what I did here with a bit of DIY. I also didn't have any adhesive to hold it on. So it's just using a bit of used adhesive that actually come off um, holding the glass down in the first place before I actually did the mod to the back panel. You can see it's not perfect, but for demonstration purposes, it does its job. With it installed, I can reinstall the two screws on the bottom, and we're done. So this is it, the transparent iPhone 4S. This is a 16GB unit running iOS 8.1.1 with SHSH blobs for iOS 5.0.1, 5.1.1, 6.0.1, 6.1.3, 8.1.1 and of course 9.3.5 meaning it can be downgraded and upgraded to these iOS versions freely. I remember wanting to do this mod years ago when I used to use an iPhone 4 as my daily driver but never ended up doing it as I'd never worked on an iPhone before. I did end up installing a transparent back glass but I always wanted that front part too. Years later I have finally done it with an iPhone 4S. I love transparent tech as it allows you to see the inner workings and this is no different to any other transparent device. This looks stunning and I think it is one of the coolest looking iPhone 4S's out there. Although the back glass didn't come up as good as I had hoped, I will try and source out one from online that's been professionally done and will look just like the front. But for a demonstration, you kind of get the point of what I'm trying to go for with this look. And it is another device I can add to my custom devices that I own. Every single one of my custom devices has been built and customized by myself and you can find all those videos in the custom and modded tech playlist. And there's not just phones, I've also done a MacBook and I'm also going to be doing an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 2 very soon with some custom cases for those, so stick around for that. What's really cool about this iPhone 4S mod that didn't work with the Galaxy S8 is you can actually make the front of the phone transparent as well, which is what you see most of the time. So it's pretty unique and awesome, although there isn't a lot behind that display that you can actually see, it still looks pretty cool in my opinion. I love transparent tech and as you can see I have a fair few things that I've modded out and made transparent. And you can see here the difference between my DIY attempt and one that you can buy out of a factory. You can see they look a lot different and I prefer the one from the factory although it doesn't have an Apple logo. And on that note this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the modded and custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. Also make sure to follow me on my social media, link for that will be down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.